Oh boy, it's a Rev video. I know Rev. I know this person. I know who they are. Okay. Drama. My favorite. Hey, what's up guys? Rev here. So over the past couple of years, there's been an increasing level of complaints about fan service in video games. These complaints not coming from gamers. Yeah, I was about to say, like, who has any problem with this? This is like... This is just people that don't play games. I don't think anyone cares. Because, like, the, the thing is, is, like, I'm going to be real with you. I, I talk to a lot of... I do talk to a lot of, like, girl content creators, like, that are my friends. And, like, they're gay for the characters, too. So I don't really see what the problem is. Like, gamers don't really give a shit, you know? Rather, they're coming from a loud minority of people from social media platforms like Twitter. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, a lot of game developers, including those from Japan, have been listening more and more to the Twitter users. Big mistake. You should never listen to Twitter users. In fact, you should do whatever. You should do exactly what they say to not do. That's what you should do. Than the actual gamers interested in their products. And that is reflected in their sales because as they've been... You could use it as a reverse metric. Like, you just do exactly the opposite of what they tell you to do. ...injected more woke nonsense into their games. Their the PR disaster, they don't down. fucking matter. However, this conversation has been re-explored once again with the recent talk about Stellar Blade. We talked about this on the channel, but as more trailers and previews have come out for this game that's coming out in a very short while, we've seen gamers get what they've been asking for. And that is conventionally attractive characters with fan service. That is something a lot of gamers enjoy, and people have been praising Stellar Blade and their developers for delivering just that. Now, I don't know if you guys have had a similar experience to me, but my Twitter timeline over the past couple of days has been nothing but Tifa from Final Fantasy. Tifa's pretty hot. She's really hot. Okay, so basically all it took was a spoiler of Final Fantasy. You know the what kind of like the old Tifa more? Like the kind of old look that Tifa had? I kind of liked it more. I, I like it more than the new like CG one. To be honest. Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth, where Tifa is in a swim Not the polygonal, just like the art. ...suit to basically lead us what, what feels like a new renaissance in gaming. That's all it took. People are going absolutely rabid for this Tifa design here. All it took was the swimsuit. And here, I'll play a little clip of it. I don't even know if it's translated. It doesn't matter. You'll get the point. All right. What the fuck? What the fuck, chat? I thought this bitch was dead. What the fuck? Believe me when I'm telling you, I'm not exaggerating. When this combination of Tifa in a swimsuit has consumed Twitter over the past couple of days. It's all everyone's talking about. It's all over everyone's timelines. And it's really not that surprising. The formula is simple, ladies and gentlemen. All you have to do is take Tifa. Dude, you know what? You know what happened? Dude, dude. You know what? Okay. Fuck. Okay. So... When I was a kid, I didn't have a PlayStation, okay? And my uncle had a PlayStation. And I was like, like, you know, I had, I had like kind of older stuff, right? Like I had like a Super Nintendo and I was playing like, you know, Mother and stuff like that. And I was like, wow, I really like RPGs. They're so cool. Look at Mario RPG. It's so cool game, right? Real fun. And then my uncle was like, you haven't seen shit, Leaflet. Check out this Final Fantasy VII. And I was like, shit right so like I, so like basically you know i i saw the final fantasy something like wow that's like the good shit right and then i remember buying like uh I, you know because i didn't have a playstation I, I saw like wait a minute i can play final fantasy 7 on my computer really so like 
so like I said, I want the Final Fantasy VII on the computer. And so like I ended up getting it, right? I saved up my money and I got Final Fantasy VII for the computer. And I opened it. I put the CD in the computer. And I opened it up. And there was a f f folder with just files. And I was like, what are these? And like, I didn't know how to fucking install this shit. I, like, I was a console. I knew what the hell this was. Right? So I was like trying to figure out how to play it. And I'm clicking on all the folders in there. And I click on one folder. And I'm like, whoa, it's a little movie. It's a little movie. And like, whoa, look. It's like, I remember seeing her on my when my uncle was playing. Her name is Aries. I remember her. She's so cool. And she was like selling flowers. And oh my God. A character everyone likes and then add anime titties boom success the formula is so simple and it was working for so many years until recently where now game developers are shying away from these things because they want to appease people on twitter for example and it's very strange let's get back to the very simple formula and a lot of people have looked at this situation and said hey is this a redemption arc for Square Enix, who a lot of people have had. Oh man! Oh man! A lot of woke nonsense. Hold up! Hold up, dude! She's doing like that peak boob stance, dude. This is this is a thing that we girls do that like buffs our boobs. This is a peak. This is like she knows what she's doing. This is like this is the boob fighting stance right here. You put like one arm under. You put one arm underneath, and then you like hug the other arm, and it just pushes everything up, dude. Yeah, yeah. This is a hack. This is this is pro. She's a pro professional. Doing with their recent titles, and in fact, only a month ago, we saw this article from Niche Gamer where they reported that Square Enix quietly removed a Him recruitment looking. page bragging about censorship. Luckily, now we talked about this maybe about right a year now. ago, but this was a disastrous. Thanks for the vis anonymous. Thank you. Translated this recruitment page where a member so of much. the ethics team over at Square Enix what? made some very concerning statements talking about the biggest joy of their job being removing and changing things that the developers had made, including changing things to a point where the players would never even know. Get them out of here. Afuera. Get out. Whatever was removed existed in the first place. And when they're talking about things that they want to change, they're referring to things they consider controversial, problematic, and weird, which is a very open-ended concept and way too open for someone on an ethics team to be tinkering with. Go work at Disney. Go work at Disney and get the fuck out of here. When they're doing their changes for a local- uh, Insufferable, man. Insufferable and annoying as fuck. ...or a public release of a title. However, a lot of people looked at the situation and said, they really lost that much from Forspoken, huh? So they're now starting to- Wait, what's Forspoken? Yo, what's Forspoken? I don't know what that is. What is that? What is that? A bad game. Scale back some of these recent changes and uh, overall company policy- Wait, are they busting out the titties for money? <laughs> they're busting out the titties for money? ...policies and directions they've been pursuing the last couple of years. And you might be onto something because it's the classic use the summer summer banner for extra money because you failed something. Release the summer banner a little bit early. Nothing will make a company classic more classic than move taking away their money, taking away their profit. And that's what happened with Forspoken. Absolute dumpster fire of a game in case you weren't aware. So what's so bad about it? This was not only a big blow to the reputation of Square Enix just because this game under Wait, what's wrong with this picture? I don't get it. But it was also a huge blow financially because as it turns out, this game cost a hundred million Holy fuck. dollars. Dude, dude, triple A is dead. Just stop. Dude, how much how much did Pal World cost to make? It must have been like did they ever Did they ever release that? Like how much money did Pal World Pal World cost? Dude, it's it's bad. Just stop doing it. You know what I mean? $5 doesn't cost $5.
It's because games are no longer like a lot of these big triple A games are no longer about gameplay. Gameplay is king. Gameplay is the most important thing. If the game is fun or not, the graphics don't, you know, I, I know, I know a lot, a lot of artists are going to be pissed at this. The graphics don't matter. The art doesn't, the, the art doesn't matter. The, the music doesn't matter. The, the effects don't matter if the gameplay is shit. All of that stuff is like extra good if the gameplay is good, right? So like if you have a cake, right? So say like you had like a cake, right? And you had like really nice icing on it, like beautiful, beautiful icing, got strawberries on that. That's all of that stuff. That's all the art, right? The icings, the art, the strawberries are like the sound design. And then you've got all the decorations. It looks really nice. And you cut into it and it's fucking shit on the inside. Then no one's going to play it because it's shit. It's shit at its core. And that's why game the, the gameplay is so important because you play it for fun. You know what I mean? Yeah, a hundred million dollars for this quality. Okay, you kind of get what you deserve in that situation. I mean, I but actually don't course, really see the problem. It could just be a bad shot. That you know, Square Enix maybe turning a new page. I would be remiss if I didn't bring up the real concerns that have not been addressed. And as Scratch Point here points out, a lot of the ESG-related policies that they're pursuing on their pages have not been removed, unlike the recruitment what was, page what was that? that they're bragging about censoring and removing. What is that? What is the e e ESG? What is that? What is that, guys? E ESG. What is that? MSG's cousin. Things. This is still right on their front page talking about all of their community goals and all of their goals oh, to inspire dude. and have as much, much in. Just make games. Make good games. Oh my god. Just make good games. Inclusivity as possible and tell the stories of all kinds of different rich backgrounds in their products as well as. <sighs> Pursuing more diverse, uh, diverse routes and representation and equity and all. The Ground Blue Fantasy, good game. Lots of, lots of representation. Never talk about it. Not the point. And it's a good game. These things, when really people just. It's a little jank. It's a little jank. It's, it's, you know, it's a little bit jank, but it's still really good. A good game. I think that's really all people want instead of all this. Very performative nonsense on their page. We all know they're doing to impress someone else, not gamers. Uh, gamers just want a good piece of media. That's it. That's how you keep them happy. Uh -huh. I don't know why we're kind of losing the plot here with all these attempts by Square Enix here. But moving forward, I'm going to give the hottest take ever, okay? This is this is nuclear. Uh oh, and let's hear it. Uh, before you start attacking me in the comments, let me soften the blow with this. Okay. Listen very carefully. I think this Tifa swimsuit looks amazing. Okay, I think it looks awesome. Okay, I'm happy with it. But I believe okay. this is a compromise. The way this swimsuit what? was designed was a compromise. Because what? maybe wait, if this wait, was why? 10 to 15 years ago, this would be a bikini. Okay. But this is cute. It's cute. I, 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 think, I think a little bit more clothes is cuter than just like than skimpier, honestly. Okay. It's just a different landscape. Yeah, thanks for the nowadays, follow. Thank you. Think adding all of Thank these you. Get your nips sorted. Thank you. Swimsuit let them cook. All right, let them cook. By Square Enix. And this is their way of basically having a middle ground between what gamers want and their own whatever thought process and direction they've been heading the last couple of years. But, anyways, I kind of forget about all that when I see uh, mini games like this. <laughs> Isn't it like a like a like a Tifa sit up mini game? Shared some more uh, some more spoilers where uh, Tifa's doing sit ups in that swimsuit, and I'm like, oh yeah, you know what? Maybe we are back. But anyways, while a lot of people are praising Final Fantasy, a lot of people are celebrating the downfall of Suicide Squad: Kill the Justice League. This is a game we talked about a few weeks ago after it released. 
and it's been a dumpster fire. As a product itself, I think nothing sums up the experience more than the final scene, besides a lot of the pandering. You know, I'm surprised that people have it, or maybe they have done this, uh, and I just am not aware of it, but I'm surprised that nobody rose a stink about the name Suicide Squad. You know, like, I'm surprised that there wasn't like, oh, so you're making fun of suicide, huh? Oh, are you taking it lightly? I'm surprised that wasn't a thing. During throughout the game, the final scene really just wraps everything up with a nice bow, and it really just represents a lot of beloved IPs being treated really poorly by this Wait, game. what happened to Batman? In the final scene, Harley Quinn boops Batman on the nose and then five seconds later shoots him in the face. But he's Batman. But he's Batman. What? like a villain power fantasy and unfortunately those lines from batman were the final lines of the now late kevin conroy's career and that was someone who was the voice of batman a very beloved voice actor and beloved member of this franchise and any related communities and that was his final line just on yeah I, I mean i mean honestly like like to be 100 percent honest i i it's like it's like you're playing villains. Is just playing villains. You want to kill the the good guy, whatever, man. An, an unfortunate end to an unfortunate IP and. It, it is a little weird to kill like such an iconic character, but uh, I mean, you know, villain power fantasy, whatever. Game here, and the proof is in the pudding with how gamers are responding. To this, uh, here we are. The premise of the game is most of the Justice Squad League became Justice brainwashed League. and become evil. Oh, okay. Thanks for the context. Thank you. Has less than a thousand players, which I'm pretty sure that's around the number of hardcore classic WoW right now, even though Season of Discovery is out there. Just to give you an idea of how low that number is for a major release like this. And of course, Warner Bros. is actually feeling the concerns here. They're feeling the heat because they're losing a lot of money on this one. I think that's... Yeah, they got that Fishman Island uh, representation. No secret, where they have now come out and said that this game has fallen short of their expectations. So the WB has flat out admitted this, that this game was a critical and commercial failure in its attempt to herd its... Arkhamverse into a live mm -hmm. service game. And as you can see here, here's a quote from the WB CFO Gunnar Weidenfels saying that the game had fallen short of their expectations and there was no numbers shared, but he said that this game created a tough year for their gaming business and going forward in comparison to last year's smash hit Hogwarts Legacy that they're going to have to do things differently. And that's not very surprising uh, Hogwarts like well because Hogwarts Legacy you gave people what they wanted Legacy coming out as the number one selling game of 2023 and then the next thing is Suicide Squad killed the Justice League which was a big time flop and really scoring horribly for a triple a title it, it, it's just not a good look and for a lot of people they look at this situation with Suicide Squad killed the Justice League and they say yeah the, the consequences of your actions this was an a very underwhelming the Title problem with Rock this power Steady, fantasy is how really, impossible it, it is. It's just the way it is, and I no see. one really feels sorry for them. And hopefully, again, this serves as a wake-up to what gamers actually want, and maybe they'll start changing things in a positive direction. And that's what a lot of people are saying is happening with Square Enix right now, and if that holds true, we'll have to just wait and see. But for now, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. As always, share all of your thoughts about today's topics in the comment section down below, and I'll see you guys next time. I mean, people just need, people just need to make good games, really. I mean, that's that's like the real problem. Is like, like gameplay has to be fun, right? That's the important.